Okay, so welcome. This is a second video still about the CPP analysis. So we're still related talking about the big even point in a sales dollar. So in some cases, uh, when the company using the CPP analysis, the manager will prefer to use the sales revenue as the measurement. Um, so they, they prefer to check the sales activity rather than a unit sales. So for the privacy example, uh, we see that for example, we would like to sell around 100,000, probably 1,000 units in order to get uh, to, to achieve the BEP. But we can do also to focus on the sales revenue one. So you have to you know, measure the sales activity instead of the unit sold, right? So uh, as I taught before, the formula of the break-even uh, point is actually the break even formula is you can rearrange it okay so um for example if the break even point for the wheat tier company was computed as a 16 um unit 600 units sorry so since the selling price for each lawnmower is uh 400 so they sought the lawnmower they called that kind of the probably um kind of the riding roof so they sought that unit and the break-even volume in the sales revenue, it's around $400 in times 600, right? Right, so that answer is actually easily can convert it to the um, expense in the sales revenue, right? So we can just rearrange it. And then to calculating the break-even point in the sales dollar, for example, in the sales uh, perspective, the variable costs, um, have been defined as a percentage of the sales. Okay, so in the preface one, we know just the amount, right? But for this part, we have to know the percentage. So for example, the price is around 10 and the variable cost is six. So the remainder is the contribution of margin, right? So it's around four. So if the 10 units are sold, so the total fiber cost would be $60, right? So since the unit sold and $10, the revenue and has six variable costs. We could say that 60% of each dollar of revenue earned is actually attributable to the variable costs. We got from what? For, for six divided by 10, okay? All right, so this is it. So we first, we have to know the variable cost ratio, right? So, and in the one that I said before is around 60%. That was proportion of each sales dollar that must be used to cover the variable cost. And we can, you know, calculate it by using total data or unit data. All right, so this is the proportion of each sales dollar used to cover the variable cost. And the, the second one, we have to know the contribution margin ratio because this is a proportion of each sales dollars available to cover the fixed costs and also profit for the profit, right? So for example, if the fiber cost ratio is around 60%, um, so 60% of the sales, um, so the contribution margin will be remaining, right? So it will be around 40% of the sales, right? So it will be complement each other. After that, we can just uh, try to calculate. Okay, so, so where actually the fixed costs fit into this? So since the contribution margin is a revenue remaining after the variable costs are covered, so it might be some revenue available to cover fixed costs and also contribute to profit, right? So there are three possibilities. The fixed costs can equal the contribution margin or probably fixed costs can be less than the contribution margin or fixed costs can be greater than the contribution margin. So if the fixed cost equal, then operating income is zero, right? So the company is in break of in. But if the fixed cost is less than the contribution margin, so the company will be earned profit, right? So now just like, so okay, try to cap capture this um, question first, okay? Because we're going to try to discuss it here. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop this one. Okay, so what is the situation that will be coming up in this part? So if the fixed cost is, um, if the fixed cost, if 
fixed cost is equal with the contribution margin. So why I keep doing contribute contribution margin, right? So the answer would be e. So what we come here? So the operating income or profit profit is zero. So this is the moment when the company had to break it in. Hmm, get in. It should be like that. It should be coming over here, okay? The next one, if the condition when the fixed cost is, fixed cost um, is less than the contribution margin, Okay, so it'd be like this, contribution margin. So the company will end profit, right? Profit probably is positive, okay? Mm. So it would be positive operating income. What if the fixed cost is greater than the contribution margin. Again, so the profit here would be um, loss, right? So no, there is no profit, I'm sorry. So we just make it this loss. We get operating lost that situation. So now let's have a look at the example. Um, it's really still based on the retail company before, but now we are using the sales revenue approach. Okay. Oh no, I'm not going to move it. So now we're going to sales revenue approach. So here, okay. Um, I think the previous example we've done it before, like the sales of the dollar in um, how many minutes? It's, okay, so this is a question. Um, <clears throat> the sales have been, I think, just um, similar with the previous example. <clears throat> so we would like to know the percentage of the sales here. So based on this one, we know that uh, the 400, absolutely, it's 100%, right? And then uh, for the variable cost, uh, the one that we discussed before, the variable cost uh, ratio. So we got here from 325,000 divided by 400,000. So it would be around this one. Okay. So coming from this amount. And then the rest of it um, is just um, one or, or 100 minus 181. We got um, 10.75%. Okay. And then the fixed costs here are 45,000. So how to know how much the sales revenue that the, the this company and to, to uh, you know, to achieve the break fine, to end the break even, right? So um, we use a previous formula, like uh, we've done that we've said before, it's operating income, operating income, so it's done from the sales, right? Sales minus variable cost. And then minus with the um, accident is coming up. Sorry, it's just, okay. 
So suppose that we want to get the property income is zero and then this amount, the cells. We would like to know the cells respectively, okay? So we're going to use the variable uh, cost ratio. Time is ratio, time of the cells, all right? And, and also, um, we have to make the key like this. And then minus with the fixed cost. Okay. So we got zero here. So I'm at the cells. Um, right. So we know that the variable cost ratio time of cells we can got um, we we know around one point zero point eighty eighty one point twenty five, right? So if we can just uh, calculate by using this one, one minus the variable cost ratio, okay, so then minus with the fixed cost. So. Uh, we got zero here, uh, zero, and this is still minus. Now, we know that the variable cost ratio is 81.25%, um, so it's around um, 0 0.125, right, and minus 45,000, okay. So how can we, we move it to the left side, the cells time? Um, so after you calculate this one, you got um, the rest of it, it's 18.75. Um, so okay. And then, um, and now we we be coming up with this amount in here. So we got the cells after using the calculation of the mathematical calculation. Here we got it, two hundred and forty thousand cells. So, so based on this um, information, we know that the retail must earn revenue uh, around two hundred and forty thousand in order to break even, right? Okay. So um, you have to remember that the that's on the revenue, so it will be got to zero. So actually, we can we can you know we can uh, we can directly find the answer of this one for the break if in units. Okay. Um, for the formula, probably you can start from trying to find the break if in cells uh, by using the contribution margin ratio, you can see the detail on the break. Okay, so this is about the calculation from a sales perspective. Right. Okay, so, um, so that was the calculated of the break event um, from the sales revenue, right? So we knew that um, how much the sales revenue they have to generate in order to get the end operating income around 60,000, for example. So we have to trajet it from the very beginning. So this is actually uh, just similar with the one that we've done before. So how about the operating income we got around um, 60,000 for our fixed, fixed cost. Um, okay. so. All right, so let's have a look at another one. So this one that we've done before, it's around, we, we've got to find the cells, right? But at this point, um, we can know that, I'm just gonna see, uh, okay, one minute. I'm just gonna see the, another example. Mm. Okay, so, Probably we come up to your to your mind. Why actually um, we need to do uh, you know 
convert the way in order to calculate the break even point in order to find it. Uh, we have to find a single sales revenue by, why not just multiply the unit sales price by the unit sold? So why we need to do a different formula, right? So there are two reasons actually. The first one is a formula for the sales revenue. It will be allows us to directly solve the revenue uh, if that what is desired. So the second one, the sales revenue approach is all of, you know much simpler to use the multiple product setting. So let's have a look. This one, uh, the next one, we're going to move to the. Uh, if we look at the. Um, Right, so this is the one that have been discussed before. Uh, how can you get this one? I've been explaining it on the, on the whiteboard, previous one, okay? All right, so now um, this is actually the contribution margin ratio that will be um, helping and help uh, to calculate it easier. So it's easier than before, it's easier than before. So this is a formula just by using cells, um, one minus variable uh, cost rate and minus fixed cost. So we got this cells 240,000 or break even cells is a fixed cost itself divided by the country pushing margin ratio. But I suggest you guys try to answer using two uh, method. That would be better if it's come up in the exam. So the next question will be come up, can we use a CPP if WeTier has more than one product? So WeTier is a company itself. Yes, actually, but we have to add the direct fixed expense to the analysis. Okay, so direct fixed expense is actually the fixed cost that can be traced to each product. And uh, it will be avoided if the product didn't exist. Okay, so that will be come up. Right, so I'm going to write the, actually the question is in, okay, just I'm going to write to the whiteboard. Okay, so this is um, the example. Um, there are two models that has been uh, produced by the Witcher company. So uh, it sells around 480,000 for mulching, riding it's 340,000. And, um, this mulching mower, I have to sell around four hundred uh, dollar in a riding mower to sell eight hundred dollar. Okay, so um, so the marketing manager department have to make sure that they can, you know, sell around um, one hundred one thousand two hundred uh, mulching mower and eight hundred uh, riding mower. Okay, so you have to be noted that this is. Um, actually uh, direct fixed expense is also common fixed expense. So direct fixed expense is fixed cost that can be traced to each product and it will be avoided if the product and didn't exist, right? But the common fixed expense is the fixed costs that are not traceable to the product. And it will be, you know, it will be remained even the product was eliminated. Okay, so the common fixed expense is probably kind of a, a real fixed expense, right? Okay, so, we can uh, easily trace it to the product itself. Okay. So um, this is actually the question. So um, they want to actually, this condition happened when the WeChat company, um, they want to add in the new product line, right? So wants to know how many each model that can be sought uh, to break even. So, the reason is uh, using the equation. So we've done uh, it before, right? So uh, um, the equation will be um, give the immediate problem for that. So it actually for the single product analysis, but for the two product, there are two unit contribution margin here, right? So the multi mower has a contribution unit um, is uh, 75. Okay, so we got from 400 times minus 325 before, right? And the riding mower has um, 200. Okay, because the 200, we got the, because the total variable cost in here is uh, 480, right? So we know that the cells is eight um, units, right? 
So it will be got uh, per unit variable is um, 600. 600. So um, we got the cal calculating by 800 minus uh, 600. Okay. It's about 200. So um, how can we solve the solution if there is two product lines? So we have to apply the analysis uh, to each product line first. So we have to get the individual break even point when the income is defined as a product margin. So for example, for the margin uh, mower break even point, so we got here, the fixed cost is around 30,000, right? And um, we know that the price per unit variable before is um, 75, okay? So we got, Mm, the multi hour we do it uh, we do it um, individually okay so in order to get the break of a unit okay so it's fixed cost um, so it's fixed cost here yeah, it's um, divided by divided by Priced um, minus unit variable cost, right? So, so as the one that we said before, it's we got um, thirty thousand from the question divided by uh, the price minus its um, four hundred uh, minus three hundred twenty-five. This is actually the related question we did before, so we got four hundred in it. Okay, so how about the uh, the writing one? So the writing uh, mower, break even unit. Mm. Okay, for a moment. So this one we got the same the same formula, right? So we're just going directly doing that. Forty thousand from the question divided by price uh, divided by um, it's two hundred, right? So two hundred got from eight hundred. Minus six hundred. So we got from that one. So we got the answer is two hundred and two. Okay. So there's four hundred and also two hundred. Uh, four hundred for the marching while we're writing while it's two hundred. It's just you know it must be sold in order to achieve the break even product margin, right? But actually, the break even product margin will be covered only. <laughs> to direct fixed costs, right? The common fixed costs remain to be covered. Okay. All right. So, um, so the the problem we coming will with um the common fixed expense that is identified yet, right? So this is to be uh, part of the analysis. So we have to allocate the common fixed cost to each product line before we compute the break-even point that will be resolved as difficulty. So the problem is to allocate the common fixed expense in here, right? So um, we can convert also the multiple product problem into the single product problem. So if we can done it, so we can do the single product CPP methodology, okay? So the key for the conversion is we have to identify the expected sales mix. So the sales mix is actually the relative combination of product being sold by a firm. Okay, so no. Okay, so this is the one that we've done before, right? So um, it's not very complete on the PPT side. Okay. So um, one of the solution that we've done discussed before is actually the sales mix, right? So the sales mix is actually the, the combination of the product being sold by the firm, right? Because there are two products in here, right? So this is actually um, the sales mix itself. You can measure by um, in units sold or the proportion of the revenue. So for example, um, the wheat here plans on selling 130 1,200 uh, on my whiteboard, okay? 1,200 um, 
um, multi malwares and uh, 800 writing malwares. So the cells make in the units is um, it will be 100, 2,000, you know, um, divided by 800. So usually the cells mix is actually reduced to the smallest possible whole numbers, okay? I mean, we can make the, the what do we call it? Um, the percentage, like perbandingan, what do we call that? How, how do we call it? So the perbandingannya itu, you become uh, 12 uh, banding 8, right? So, and we can make it uh, lebih kecil lagi ke 3, um, divided by two, so in compare with the two one. So so it means that the every three multi hour salts, so the two writing hours will be salt. So that's why we say that that makes one, okay? All right, so, um, so that was the simplest one actually, we can just find it, so every five, uh, that's a simple uh, explanation we left with that. So how can we define the particular, um, you know, cells that mix allows us to convert a multiple product problem into the single product CPP format? So let's have a look at this one. So uh, in this part, the 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 we here have to sell the three multi mowers for the every two writing mowers. So it can define that the single product it sells as a package, right? It will be contain three multi mowers and also two writing mowers, right? So by define the product as package, so the multiple product problem it will be in convert into the single product one. So how can we use the approach uh, of the big event um, in the units? So the package selling price and the product so variable cost per package, we have to be known, right? So in order to know and compute the package value, all right, so let's have a look at this one. So we know that unit price in the very beginning, 400 for the merging, uh, writing it's 800. So this is a variable cost if we've known it before. So, so we got the contribution margin here. And we also know the package content uh, mix, right? So we, we know that the contribution mix uh, of the package, it's around two, three for the mulching, writing for two. So we got the margin, um, just multiply this one, okay? So you simply multiply it. So we got the package total is 625. So based on the package contribution margin, the fundamental break even equation we can use to determine the number of package that we need to be sold to break even, right? So based on this one, Okay, there you go. So um, we got the break even point here by fixed cost divided by package contribution margin here. So the fixed cost here, it's um, 96,250. How can we got this? Uh, it adding for um, the direct fixed expense is $70,000 and uh, common fixed expense is 26,250. Okay, so this amount. And this amount divided by the package for the contribution margin. We got 154 package. So it means that the contribution margin approach will be multiple products. So that's one. So um, it means that based on this, the we chair have to sell, um, have to sell 400, um, yeah, it's 462. How can we get it? Because they have the, the what we call it, the portion before three, right? So three times this one, then the price is 400. And the writing more word, it would be two uh, times 154 in order to get a break even. Okay, so this is a calculation after, uh, you know, almost the cells that they, they can get and also the variable expenses. So this is actually can be used uh, if the firm were selling in the single product. Okay, so that was to solve the problem related to this. So this is a uh, this proofing, the proofing. So you know that we got the big even point if this amount coming up. Okay, so it'll be like this. Yeah. All right. So thank you. So this is actually just um, the explanation for the multiple product.